Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new tutorial on Factorio. This one is for Omni Trains. I say a brand new tutorial. We used to do a lot of tutorials around here, and unfortunately, you know, I've been out of town a bit. But here's a new one for the latest version of the game for Space Age Omni Trains. So, what are Omni Trains? So, Omni Trains are basically a train that has wagons that can take any sort of item cargo from any sort of mine or outpost and bring it back to its depots. Okay, we're not doing Omni Depots because Omni Depots are a full other kettle of fish. However, we have done that in the past, um, before the latest update. I think it was 0.12 that we done the Omni Depot. This is an advanced Omni Train setup because you can see there's multiple trains that are allowed to go on this system. But for a basic Omni Train setup, you need two things. You need a holding area, which we call the staging. You need a depot or multiple depots, one for each resource, and you need an outpost. So, one of the key considerations is that the depots must have the ore name, then whatever you want after, but must have the icon of the ore, not the ore name, the icon of the ore. And the outpost should have the icon of the ore at the outpost as well. We need this for using circuits to determine where the trains have to go and where the trains have to come back to. So, you've got your staging station, you've got your depot. And you've got the first thing we want to set up is our depots. So as you can see here, we've got green wire going from every one of our steel chests. We have 32 steel chests here. Each steel chest can take 4,200 of an ore. The total of the steel chests is 76,800. What we do here is we find each divided by 768. The way we, the reason that we do that is because it finds a percentage of the a percentage fullness of all of these steel chests. So it's basically dividing by 76,800 multiplied by 100 to find the percentage. The reason that we use each is because that allows you to also have higher quality ores being put into this. So that finds us an overall percentage of what's in the chests. Then we add one to it. So we take the input of iron ore plus one output iron ore. It's taking everything that's put in adding one and output an iron ore. The only purpose of this is when this is zero, we still want to say it's iron ore because we still want to say we need iron ore if there is zero in the chests. That signal then gets propagated to big electric pole, which passes up to the holding station, which in your case should pass it straight to the train station and then be set to send to train. So the other thing with the depot is we have a red cable coming from the train stop going to the first arithmetic combinator that does the, div the division to find you the percentage. And the reason we do that is so that we can read the train contents. So as soon as a train is stopped here, we include whatever contents is on that train as being part of this depot stock. That way we can send that signal directly up here. And that's to stop another train going for the same thing. It's not necessary for a single train setup, but when you do multi-train setups, you will need this. The next piece of circuit circuitry that I do that isn't necessary for the first setup, but um, it's a little quality of life improvement, is I do the same thing here, where I take a single signal, but this time from one box. Um, I'm dividing it by 24, and then I'm putting that to the train stop as P. The reason we output that as P is so that the train stop can set its priority. So we're setting the priority here by however many P's get sent to the train stop. The reason that we want to do that is so that we know, or the train knows, what outpost has the higher percentage of ore in its chests. So that it can go to the one that's most full to get the ore and come back to the depot. So the last thing you're going to want to do is to set up your train orders. And this mainly revolves around the use of interrupts. So the first thing you want is just a basic order for the train to go to the holding station or the staging station or whatever you've called your station and just leave it as all locomotives fully fueled and as long as you've got a fuel line going to that that should satisfy that requirement then we're going to use interrupts if you don't know about interrupts um, basically it is an instruction that a train can get based on a set of requirements that only applies once it is leaving a station it will not interrupt the train mid-journey, but it only applies once the train is leaving a station. For a super basic Omni train setup, you only need this or required interrupt, and we're going to talk through it. So this interrupt takes any circuit, 
signal that is passed to it that is less than 5, that is the condition on the interrupt. If it receives a circuit signal that is less than 5, then it triggers this interrupt. The interrupt then takes that circuit signal, space outpost, so that is the train station name, as we set up before. So basically, if it gets a signal that says coal is less than 5, then it will take coal, coal, space, outpost, then try to go to a train station with the name coal, space, outpost, or any other ore that you've put in. We then want it to do full cargo inventory, or 5 seconds of inactivity. This allows your trains not to get stuck if the outpost runs out of resources, or if you have quality modules in your miners, and you start getting slightly higher quality that can't fill up the train, it will still allow the train to leave. Then we want it to go to the depot, empty cargo inventory, and then start all over again. Very simple, but it needs to be circuit space depot, circuit space outpost, circuit less than five. And that is the basics of a single train omni train setup. So that one train, if you've set up all your depots, like you can see here, if you've set up your outposts, like I showed you, then one train can service every outpost and you don't need to worry about setting up multiple trains for doing things and setting up all of their um, individual schedules or changing the groups between different outposts, you just have an Omni train. Now, say the throughput of that single train isn't high enough, which is what I'm dealing with right now in my factory. I need two trains worth because sometimes iron will be down and I need to send a train off to go and get copper. This is where the slightly more complex circuitry comes in. And if you've noticed this change, I did have brick down, but then I had to reload it because the blasted biters were attacking me. So the first thing that we're going to look at is this little segment here. This section of combinators here is to detect if there is a train present. So this tells the system, read stop train, and it gives the train ID of 28. We increase that by 5 because we use a lot of less than 5s in our system, as you can see with the, the train, or uh, required. We have a less than five signal, so we don't want any signals that are going to this station to ever be less than five, unless it's the OR signal that's going to send that train away. So we want to bump up the train ID so it's always higher than five, because the worst, the last thing that we want is that train ID setting off one of our less than five checks. The next section that we have is our big electric pole. As you can see, we do not have a signal that takes from our entire stock levels to the train station. This is intentional. What we do is we take the big electric pole, the selector combinator is set to select input with a zero index and sort ascending. The reason for this is it takes whatever is the smallest number of item from the signals that it gets and it then sends that to the station. Once again, the thing that we want is anything less than five, the train gets told to go to that outpost and go and collect more. We then take that signal and propagate it to a selector combinator with random input set to 120 ticks. All that this selector combinator is doing is essentially ensuring that the, imp the output from this isn't rapidly changing, it just keeps the output set for 120 ticks before changing output. You can do this with decider combinators and memory cells, but this is by far the easiest way to do this. This selector combinator then propagates that signal down to this decider combinator and this decider combinator is the one that checks if a train is currently there so the next thing that it checks is if the signal from the selector combinator and a train is present so if the selector combinator signal is less than five meaning that we need to send the train to get ore and a train is present it then tells this bulk inserter with set filters on to have a filter for an ore in this box and the reason we do that is for a latch. We'll get to the latch in a second because we need to show what it is that's setting the other latch. So we've got the input from the entire set, so the, the copper, stone, coal and iron, not only getting set to that selector combinator but to this decider combinator and this is the decider combinator that closes the latch. So this decide, decider combinator says any item, or each item, it checks each item in turn, if they are greater than 9, then send that output. And what that does is it tells this bulk inserter to have a filter that removes the item from the steel chest. So that's the setup of the latch. So what the latch actually does is 
as soon as the train is allowed to go, basically gets a signal to go and collect some ore, it takes four of each ore and puts it into this steel chest. That steel chest's contents are then put onto the green line, which adds it to the total amount that we have in the circuit. So it essentially says we now have 4% more in the system. And then as soon as that signal gets to over 10%, it will then remove it from it, then removing the number from the system. What this in turn does is it tells the system that a train has been sent off to go and collect ore and tells the system that that ore is back at the depot to remove that in case another train needs to get sent off. Basically making sure that we don't have two trains going for the same ore if we don't need it. And then all of this is tied together with these combinators here which essentially check if a train should get sent off until it's allowed to be sent off with a check signal. The only reason for that is so that we can have this interrupt here. So the interrupt is staging station, go to staging. So a train will always go to staging if the staging station is not full and it will wait there until it gets a tick signal of 10. The reason we have to do this is because interrupts do not trigger unless a train is leaving a station. So we need to make sure that the train is allowed to leave the station and that will allow any interrupts to trigger. Interrupts being that there is ore required at one of the depots. So the reason we use this check signal here is to make sure that the train is only allowed to leave the staging station at the same time that it is getting a signal to go to one of the ore stations. Because of the way interrupts work, this train needs to be told it's allowed to leave this station before it can be interrupted to do something else. Interrupts will not work on a train mid-journey. So we need to tell this train that at the exact moment that you're leaving this station, you're also getting a signal to go and collect ore. And that's what this is for. Otherwise, if we didn't have this, the train would just go to the holding station and just wait there. And the next train would come to the staging and then that train would go holding, the next train would come to the staging, it'd just be a loop and wouldn't really work. Wasting fuel would be pointless. But with this little check, it ensures that this train only is allowed to leave the station when it's being told to go and get a resource. And that, my friends, is all that you need to do for Omni Trains, and it will work perfectly. There's a little backup that I have here where my system is only powered by these accumulators and these four solar panels. That is because I'm terrified of anything going wrong with the circuitry due to low power because we're having power issues. I don't think it's necessary, but just in case. Better to be safe than to be sorry. But that's all that I've got time for in this tutorial and I hope you have learned something. If not, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll also leave blueprints to this in the description of the video. If you've got any upgrades or improvements that you can see, then please also feel free to leave it in the comment section and I'll have a look at them and see if we can make this better together. But as always, I've been Steve, you've been awesome and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.